Thank you very much. Thank you to Heart Bangladesh for organizing a webinar on the eve of World Humanitarian Day 2022 with the theme, The Human Race. And my first point of discussion is the perspective of a Bangladeshi humanitarian professional and what are my perceptions in the light of World Humanitarian Day and with recognizing humanitarian response in Bangladesh. So I think to start the discussion I would refer a recent Hindi movie and the name is Rohingya people from nowhere. If you watch this movie you can get a uh, gist but I must not claim that this is a research report but it can give you a, a vibe or a sense but I am not taking it seriously but at the same time I am experiencing the pressure the same messages conveyed in the movie recently many incidents of shooting took place in Rohingya camps so I think the movie is not only fictional it's also factual my next point is I want to warn my viewers saying that many of my points will be a bit pessimistic but I am ready to be pessimist today as I want to focus I want to shed light from a Bangladeshi perspective as we were experiencing the Rohingya refugee crisis every day. My first point, point is about volunteer. Many organizations are recruiting volunteers in the camps and roughly 20 to 30,000 volunteers, Rohingya volunteers are working in the camps and receiving their payment salaries from different organizations. I think if we can if we recruit Bangladeshi volunteers instead of Rohingya volunteers Bangladeshi people will, will get benefit in a larger extent and even in case of the teachers we can uh, open a training center in Bangladesh where Bangladeshi local host community mem uh, youth will get training on Rohingya language and Burmese language and they can teach Burmese and Rohingya language in Rohingya camps so uh, they can get the salary uh, and so far I I know and as a, a true believer in, const in the constitution of Bangladesh they don't have a right to work in Bangladesh without a work permit my next point is uh, Riva f version 5 says clearly that uh, a big portion of Rohingya refugees are getting opportunity to work but still now the situation with the Rohingya uh, host communities are really really deteriorating every day as per Riva 5 rapid emergency uh, Rohingya influx uh, vulnerability assessment version 5 saying that 52 percent of host community people relied on LPF less preferred food the food they do they don't want to take the need they are taking that 52 percent of uh, ho community members are facing uh, growing vulnerability or increased vulnerability 
77% of host community uh, households are indebted. So the scenario is not good with the host community members. And in a Bangladeshi perspective, the situation is, is, is really horrific. Re regarding GRP 2022, we could s easily say that the GRP has failed like the other GRPs, the, G the, the, the present GRP has failed to capture the overall impact of the Rohingya refugee crisis in Bangladesh on the host communities of Cox's Bazar, Bangladesh. And about the humanitarian architecture, there were many discussions in many forums and many sectors, many meetings, many conferences that the humanitarian structure is 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 uh, some kind of uh, uh, a hybrid structure where local voices are not heard and reflected, and there is no accessibility of local NGOs and local actors, elected officials, government officials in the decision-making uh, level of SEG and HOSOG, head of sub-office groups and strategic executive group who, who, who takes the ultimate decisions of the aid distribution and other police-related issues in the Rohingya response. The next point is if we study the nature of the influx uh, and the way they have been evicted from their homes, their lands and their uh, croplands and their houses by the government of Myanmar and the international character of influx and migration, I think we have a reason to believe and we need to reassess our position that the refugee crisis in Bangladesh is can be solvable in in, 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 a, in a very short period of time I think I do have a reason to believe that it will not happen in a very very short period of time so I think Bangladesh government need to ha needs to have short-term mid-term and long-term plan how they will deal with the Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh in terms of aid localization, we need to talk about Grand Bargain and Charter for Change. There were a task force and the re uh, the r a report has been published and some recommendations have been uh, recommended by the task force, but still now the implementation has not started. So we think for us, first of all, the local responders and the local NGOs and CSOs need to understand the nature and the, 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 the urgence of localization and also the preparation of the CSOs uh, uh, is a cornerstone at the same time. The commitment of the UN agencies and international aid organizations uh, is also a very vital issue uh, in that regard the local CSUs and organizations need, organizations need to network and they need to do advocacy in policy level in also decision making level too. In terms of understanding the behavioral pattern of Rohingya refugees, still now they are not ready to accept the change. They are not ready to acknowledge equal rights of women. They are not ready to send their girls to schools. In such a situa situation, we need to understand and realize their behavioral track. And I think we cannot bear the brunt of their over medieval ideologies. So we need to think how can we bring change in them, the behavioral change to make sure that they are acknowledging human rights, women's rights, children's rights. And also <coughs> we need to think about the other sectors out of the, the sectors that are mentioned or evaluated or, or assessed under the JMS in a joint multi-sectoral needs assessment 
like the agriculture, nature conservation, species conservation, wetlands protection, transgender, girls education, higher education, early childhood development of host community people, waste management in host community areas, dust management. I'm talking about basically host community areas, sound pollution, fecal sludge management, soil protection, surface water issues, groundwater preservation, water networking, and alternative water source creating, be it uh, purification of, of, of uh, sea water and other uh, water harvesting like uh, flood water harvesting, rainwater harvesting, and local entrepreneurship a very vital issue is there are many shops within uh, the Rohingya camps so can we make a situation where our local host community entrepreneurs young entrepreneurs can access in the Rohingya camps and they do their business because the Rohingya entrepreneurs they are making money the shop owners the shoppers the shopkeepers the, the, the other other uh, businesses they are making money but they are not allowed to do that they are not paying taxes to the government they are not uh, paying uh, any any fees for trade license but they are money uh, a big amount of money so we need to think about that and i think we need to rethink about how much this research have been done to understand the impact of Rohingya refugee in flux on the host communities. Basically, the communities of Rukia, Teknaf, Ramu, and Cox's Bazar Shadar. So, we need to rethink about that. I have another discussion points of, uh, on this day is the safety and security issues and mental and other well being of humanitarian workers. I think. It's a very important issue. Some researches are going on. I took part in a research in recent days uh, and I talked to the uh, researchers from a university from Australia regarding the mental health and well-being of humanitarian workers. The, the main, there are some issues when I was talking to some respondents, some uh, participants in the KIIs and FGDs. The, the 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 issues are like the contract length six months three months one year it's a it's it's a, it's a big issue among them and uh, the approval issues uh, project approval from the CICs and the triple RCs and DCs and the project length and also visa processing for the expatriates and the project length project length is only six months within the camps which is really a, a matter of uh, huge pressure for the implementers and the project managers and uh, training and education opportunities for the humanitarian workers on humanitarianism humanitarian structure and many other sectors and many other new things and also the security situ situations inside the camp is not good it's deteriorating every day which is becoming a big issue of of mental pressure and also insecurity among the uh, uh, humanitarian workers in Bangladesh so and also uh, we have so many um, female workers within the camps but uh, they need to work in where they have no uh, Bangladeshi colleagues or colleagues from host communities so uh, they feel insecure if we recruit 100% 100% Bangladeshi volunteers as constitutionally and legally Rohingya refugees has have no right to work in Bangladesh if they don't have a work permit so and also to benefit the host communities who are suffering who are bearing the impact of this influx I thank the Heart Bangladesh Authority and the other discussants 
with whom I cannot sit and talk because of some uh, technical issues. That's why I am recording my discussions here we in this video and I think uh, it's a very very uh, time demanded uh, thing to think about the perspectives of Bangladeshi people and to think about host communities and at the same time I think we have a reason to believe and we need to expect accept that humanitarian workers must be protected if they are protected if they are secured the response is secured because they are the one who is providing services to the refugees thank you very much thank you hard bangladesh authority and i wish that we will be the inhabitant of a world where there will be no humanitarian emergency. Thank you.